looking at some stuff. There's there's one thing I really love to talk about when the time is right. So we'll do a couple things. We'll do number six and seven here in a minute. Let me real quick say this before I forget. Um, and this is just freaking off. So we have this silly notation here, right? And I can put almost anything I want here. I can define a function that generates elements, and this, this symbol means whatever elements you generate, you add them. Cool? That's what this means. So if I want to generate a bunch of odd numbers, right? In fact, let me do this. I'm sorry, I'm here. Okay. So this would represent the sum of all the odd numbers. Is that cool? Okay. Obviously, that would diverge. But here's something really, 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 really crazy cool. Um, why is the letter sigma here? Because that's the Greek letter what? S. And that stands for Summation. sum, because math people were really creative. So just like the integral symbol. It's making a big long S. Um, if I want something, this, this is so cool. Um, if I want something that I, I actually want to multiply all the odd numbers. Has that come up before in this class? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it has. I'm going to show you two different things. This is a more general uh, idea. Instead of the symbol, if I want to represent, oh yeah, take all these things and add them, I want to take all these things and multiply them. It's a big ass five. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, understand that that's just kind of silly. What's the letter pi? It's like the letter P, P for product. Again, math people are really creative. Um, this just means add up all of these. This is to multiply all of these. So this would be one plus three plus five. Blah, blah, blah. This would be one times three times five. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so if I put two in, it would be the, uh, the product of all the even numbers and so forth. Now, this is generally useful. You could put whatever kind of weird ass, the same way you do with this. You with me? But. This one I'm really disappointed in myself, but I'm, it's not something I, I've looked at a lot or used a lot. Um, but remember how we had to write like one times three times five, we had to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Um, there is notation. Uh, we're, we're talking about different um, punctuation ease. Yeah. I'm really disappointed that it didn't just come back to me, but oh well. Uh, there actually exists this, and this is really intriguing. Uh, it's just that. <laughs> what? That means multiply every other, right? Yeah. So a single factorial, uh, um, 2n factorial means 2n times 2n minus 1 all the way to 1, right? Okay. With me? Mm -hmm. 2n double factorial means 2n times 2n minus 2. It means multiply all the even numbers all the way down. So it, it, so does it triple exponential mark do odd? Or? Yeah, maybe. I, I didn't look it up to be honest, but I was thinking about that. I'm like, <laughs> it seems to make sense if I put a triple, no, no. that would be multiply every third. I double, yeah, a double one does odd and even. Yeah, it just means every two. Is that what you're asking? I'm sorry. Every third would be possibly a triple vector. Okay. It would make sense. It would kind of follow the pattern. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're all aware that the even and odd numbers are separated by two. Both of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Which is an easy thing to forget. Your brain just goes, no, it's got to be three because three is odd. But, like, <laughs> brain, keep on. Is that all right, guys? Yeah. Some cool shit. So, so are we going to see double factorials on the exam? Or? No, no, no. I just want to let you know they, they're there. Uh, I'm going to use this because we've seen that more often in the problems in the book. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I just want to let you know it does exist. So, uh, however you feel about this choice, it's been made. <laughs> so it's unfortunate for you. You weren't born like 600 years ago or so. And, uh, so our question mark system. isn't going to make it through the system. Say again. Our question mark isn't going to make it through the system. No. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. This question mark. No. Like, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make it through the system. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> oh, man. Instead, yeah, question mark is instead That's of such a weird question. It's dividing. At the end of what you just said, <laughs> there is a question mark. So yes. 
Ooh. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Uh, so I got a question on the table. I got to get a better marker. Um, I just want to throw that at you before I forget again. Do I have any good ones? Not in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Not a very good one. No free advertising for them. Oh. So the question. Oh, this is perfect. There's a question about this, and I was going to do this anyway. Um, well, first off, I want to. I do want to point out. I am aware that four and five are the same question. I don't know if you guys noticed. I do. I just really wanted you to know them. I think I meant to change five, but I just copied and pasted and just said, oh, there's problems. <laughs> um, 6A is, it's this here, right? Um, around A equals three, which seems to be a really, really evil choice. So there's a reason I want to make you do this uh, at least once. It's, okay. So I want to build a Taylor series for this function around A equals 3. So what's the immediate gut reaction you have about my choice of A? It's not zero. Gross. Well, it's not zero. It's That's not true. Not Thankfully, it's not zero. Could you develop for square root of x something around zero? No. Because what's the derivative of square root of x? Minus one, one half x over, yeah. and then and zero can't work in there. So you couldn't develop the Taylor. You couldn't develop a Maclaurin series for the square root of x. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So I kind of started this. What do I? What do I do um, to get this started? I or, I basically started it. Yes. Yeah, do more take, derivatives. Derivatives. Keep going. Yeah. So negative one fourth yeah. x to the negative three halves. Around the three eighths x to the negative five halves. Crazy sauce. Negative fifteen sixteenths x to the negative seven halves. As in, yeah. We should be able to determine a few things here. And there's one thing that I want to expose you to, and I'm not saying I'm going to do it to you in the test, but I want you to realize it's a possibility, right? The bottom is easy. You agree with me? Yes. What is the, what are the bottom seem to be doing? To the yeah. yeah, if n is zero, the bottom is one. If n is one, the bottom is two. So it'll still be like two to the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what are the tops doing? Don't leave this guy out, right? He's part of it. Let me put a one over one there. The top is one for a while. And there's an alternating part of this. Well, right, you can just ignore it as long as you put it in there. Mm -hmm. Screw the negative, the alternate part. But, but also at the same time, is it constantly alternating? Yeah. Is it? Oh. What's the first term? Positive. What's the second term? Positive. Oh, shit. Right? Maybe. So it's minus one to the n. At n, no, at n equals two, when n equals two, then it starts yes. alternating consistently. So for everything above one, everything follows a pattern. Mm. Totally like it. This <laughs> term is actually cool on the bottom. So is this term. The <laughs> bottoms are cool all the way through. But the top, I can't set up a pattern where this stays one and then suddenly it starts to become three and 15. Yes? So, I mean, we've talked about it. You can do the, where you have the one times three times five, where you have the yes. first two right, terms. So, so real quick, stay with me. So for n greater than one, and notice I haven't plugged three in yet. I'm tri desperately, we did this a little bit and the example we did this with the numbers you get when you plugged in A were pretty simple to tell anyway. In general though, you want to try to do as much as you can with figuring out patterns before you plug numbers in. So we already figured out the bottom. So for n greater than 1, what are the derivatives? The bottom is going to be, well you already said it, 2 to the n. n. Now, can somebody see what the top is? I, I actually had it up on the board a minute ago. And you can tell, you already know what's going to happen. This multiplied by 1, this multiplied by 3. Yeah, it's going to be all the odd numbers. So it's going to be basically 1 times 3 times 5 times 7. 
And you know it's going to keep going in that fashion because you know the next thing here is 9 and the next thing is all. It's just going to keep multiplying by the next odd number. You can see that after just this many terms. Right? Maybe. So the top is going to be, uh, well, let's do this. Negative 1 to the n. 0. Yeah, like n minus 1 or something. Because it starts at n equals 2, right? So this is. Uh, n equals zero. It's a zero at derivative. You guys cool with that? What I just said? Okay. Zero at derivative means n's again. And n equals one, n equals two, blah blah blah. So n equals two is where we're starting things. So don't worry about this part. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, does everybody understand? I have to take these out of the way because they do not flow with the pattern I see. So any finite number of terms that don't match a pattern you see. I'm just going to write them first. So I'm going to write what this creates plus what this creates plus summation of all everything else because I can see the pattern for everything else. There's a finite number of things that don't come from that pattern that I see. I know you're explaining it to me. Where did you get a equals three? Oh, it's given. I didn't explain. Oh. It's, just, it's given, right? I'm so sorry. I have to tell you what you're building it around. If I say McLaurin series, I don't have to tell you what a is because a is zero. But if I say Taylor, I have to tell you uh, what your building things are on, right? By the way, um, let me write this. <coughs> Not much room here. Yeah, I'm going to put it down here eventually anyway. So this is what we're trying to get to. Um, well, we're trying to get to something like this. We're going to have to adjust this a little bit. But uh, what goes on the bottom? In factorial times. Minus a. Let's go ahead and put a three there. So I forgot what you did. Do the end. Okay. So that is the general idea of a Taylor series. I just put the three in there just to be specific. Yes. Can you be given that on the test, or should we? You need to memorize this. The general form. F of n to the a over n factorial f times x. Yeah, it's n to the n derivatives. Is n factorial. And it's n power. And it's just what I give you, a. Hey, just think of it as a shift. It's just shifted. That's all it's done. This is what I meant when I was talking here. It's just a shift, right? The center has shifted. Okay, so that's the general one. And I just wrote the same thing, but with threes. How can we bother like making a distinction with the McLaurin series? Again, um, McLaurin. I forget his first name. We'll call him Fred. Yeah. Fred McLaurin, he did all his work. Taylor did all his work. Roughly the same time. Not exactly the same time, because back then, roughly the same time was sometime within the same decade, because that's basically how long it took for a word to get around the world that somebody did something. Yeah. So we just wanted to give them both props. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes? Where did your three come from? It was given. Again, so it was given. Oh. Right, it's what I'm building everything around. So I need to know all the derivatives at 3, because I want to match perfectly at 3 the value, the slope, the curvature, the curvature of the curvature, the curvature of the curvature, the curvature. The curvature. I want to match every derivative at that point. And of course, this is going to be based on, it's got to be perfect at that point. I love it. Okay, and real quick, guys, guys do you, do you, I want you to notice just the really foundational parts of this. What will the first term be? What do you get when n is 0? Um, right, this is 1, right? This is 1. No derivative, so it'll just be f of 3. So what's f of 3? Square root of 3. And it'll be plus other shit. The other shit will have x minus 3 to the first, x minus 3 squared. So when x is 3, what's the only thing that's alive? You guys get that? When x is 3, doesn't everything that have this in it, doesn't those that become 0? So when x is 3, every other term dies except. So at 3, we built it to be perfect, right? At 3, this is the square root of 3. And I'm trying to model the square root of x. Maybe. So that's the one number that this perfectly models without going very far at all. In fact, just one term out in the series. 
right? If I want to model 3.0001, maybe I'll need two terms to kind of make that a better, adjust a, a better fit. Um, what's the next term, by the way? So it'll be f prime of three. So it's f prime of three. It's one over two squared. One over two squared of three. Over one factorial times two to the n. I know. X minus three. One the first three, right? Okay. So this will be square root of three over six. Is that cool? When I rationalize it. How close is how close is that to like? Uh, how good is that in approximation? Just these two together? Yeah. Just this by itself. Uh, pretty damn good, as long as you're really close to three. Okay. And you're going to talk about how close to three you have to be. This is really just a linear approximation. This is what we did in Calc 1. And we did the whole thing where we graphed in the, the thing, and we had the lines. We saw when did it enter, when did it leave. Helped you know about tolerance, right? Um, the funny thing is, uh, if there was like a lot more time, when you have series, we have several ways to tell what the remainder looks like it's going to be. So we have all these remainder theorems that we could use to help us figure out how far to go to be within so much. It doesn't have to be a guessing game necessarily. Okay. So why did I write the first two terms? Because they need to be written by themselves because they don't follow the pattern we developed here. This pattern here only works for n greater than one. So you always have to do that. This is the weird part about this problem. The one I'm gonna give you, you're not gonna have to do this. I, I don't want you to have to worry too much about it beyond just showing me you understand the process and how to put things together, right? So you'll be able to see a pattern from everything. But I wanted to give you this problem for a couple reasons. Okay, okay. Um, so we're not finished over here, I think, right? Um, uh, and then this is x to the, yeah. What would this be, x to the what? One half minus n? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that works out. So for n equals two, one half minus two, negative three halves. I love it. So let's work a little bit. Okay, so let me stop for a minute. This is huge, what just happened. And this is what I really suggest that you do. I haven't plugged three into anything except to get these two terms just because, right? Um, that's gonna be a part of this. Okay, let me do one little thing. I'm gonna break that x part out into a part dependent on n and a part not dependent on it. Because the part not dependent on it is gonna be a freaking constant. I want you guys to see that. Yes? When n is one, this could have still worked. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, when n is one. Oh, well, we haven't finished yet. <laughs> I left the major part out, thank you. All right, there's a major part that I left out. Um, to capture the top now, it'll be one times three, times five, times seven, right? I'm glad you said that. One times three times five times seven times two n minus three. Or minus ah, five. yeah, because, okay. Yes, because it has to match at n equal two. Right? plus four? At n equal two, so this has got to be a one. This is, has got to be minus three. So when n is two, don't you get four minus three is one? Okay, and then check it for n equals, uh, so zero, one, two. So for n equal three, it's gotta be a three. So what do I get for n equals three? What is this? Minus three, it tells me how far to go into this product. I think you guys don't really understand what this means, or at least some of us don't. The number I get here is how far to go with this product, right? So if I get a three out of this, then I go one times three. If I get a five, it's one times three times five, 15, which is there. So for like a ratio test, and when it would go to two n minus one, that just means you go farther with that product? 
when you develop the an plus one yeah you have to go one more step right so we'll get there we'll get there hold on to that okay and then now i can put the x to the one half minus n by the way if you don't see that power like that you see how the tops are odd powers right so this will be uh, 2n minus 1 over 2. Is that the right way around? No, back. It's going to be negative. Minus, uh, let me think about it for a second. Is that right? Uh, negative 1? Yeah. So this will be when n is 2, this will be 1 minus 4. Yeah. So that's equivalent to what I had up there earlier. Let me stop for a minute. Now again, I want to remind you, this specific problem is a little bit harder than the problem you're going to see. It's got the same thought process. You have to find the patterns, right? And this is why it's really important. Tell yourself what n is in each thing. So as you develop what you think it is, you can check it really easy, like I just did. So let's write this differently a little bit here. Um, yeah. All right, so this would be x to the 1 half times x to the negative n. Is that, is that cool? If you break that up, it's a 1 half minus n. Well, like we had earlier. So I can bring that x to the negative n. I can put it down here. Yes? Do we really need the 1 times t times 5 times 7? Yeah. But we need to include it in our answer? Otherwise, what, what do you want to write? 2n minus 3. So then that would mean when n is 7, I mean when n is uh, one. 3, that the only thing you would have is, is 3. Uh, when n is 4, let's say, that's right. When n is 4, the only thing you would have would be the number 5. But you're supposed to have 1 times 3 times 5. That's what it's supposed to be. That is a, a kin, and that's why I started with that. That is like the double factorial. It's multiplying the next thing that's 2 away, not 1 away. So a factorial steps by 1, a double factorial steps by 2. So if you just write this, you're ignoring a huge chunk of stuff. Yeah, okay. I've noticed. Many people have trouble with these. Why would they write this like this if they really just meant 2n minus 3? That would make no sense. It's not just the single number sitting there. It's a product that keeps growing every time you go to the next term. The next term is, so to answer the question from before, if um, an is 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 2n minus 3, what's an plus 1? 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 1. Right, just add 2 to get the next one. Right, or you replace n plus 1. So 2n plus 2 minus 3 is 2 minus 1. You guys understand? So every time you go to another term, this sequence gets one bigger. Right, this, this, this product of, of elements gets one bigger. Just like factorials do. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes? Is there a way to just write that as a factorial? Like, like I said, yes. You can write that as a double factorial. But I, as somebody asked me if that would be on the test, no. If you want to use it in those situations, feel free. Okay. But I'm not going to require you to use it. I'm not going to put it as a problem because I just brought it up as a side note. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it definitely looks a lot nicer. Um, okay, okay. So, um, let me see how I'm going to say this. I want to help you as you are working through these kind of problems. Everything I've done hopefully makes some sense to you. So, so I developed, you know you've got to do the derivatives. That's a very inherent part of creating a Taylor series. You have to do that. Figure out what those are, and then immediately see is there anything I can see that's making a pattern? 
based on n, right? And we should have enough practice with that to feel okay trying to deal that out, right? To see what it is. I'm gonna give you something that's not like too crazy out of nowhere. Um, so everything's cool, I think, up to this point here, possibly, right? So the bottom is definitely in your face. I mean, two, four, eight, six, oh, that's too beautiful, right? The top's a little bit weird, but if you just kind of follow how the next thing gets created, it's just multiplying by the next odd number. And then your powers, you just figure out, you know, you gotta figure out how do I write this um, to capture the n equals two, it has to have a three there, n equals three has to have a five there, so forth. The, uh, the step I think that's not making a lot of sense possibly is from here to here, where I just broke this up. Yeah, that, that was just yeah. about to ask. <laughs> because, aren't I gonna put a constant in for x? What am I gonna put in there? Three. Right? Mm. So won't this just be a square root of three that I can just pull out? Everything that's dependent on n will have to stay n, of course, right? And maybe, oh, I can tell you guys love this problem. And again, again, this is a little harder than your standard Taylor series. I'm just showing you the things that you can do with this and the types of thoughts you'll have to have while you work through something. So now, what does f n of 3 look like? Because that's what I need here. The only thing that changes, what's the only thing that changes? Three on the end. It'll be three down here, and it'll be three in there, right? So it'll be square root of three, I'll just put it out front, times negative one, the n minus one, one times three times five, blah, blah, blah. All over, two to the n times three to the n, yes? Which is? Six, six to the n. Six to the n. You see, that, that doesn't happen all the time. Please, understand, you all understand that anytime we do a problem, you can't just take everything we do and go, that's something I always do. No, let's screw that. This one had uh, one half feet, that's a, that's a constant. And then n, okay, that's not a constant. Anything with an n is obviously not a constant because it lives in something where n is changing. So, does that make any better sense or no? You all hate this? I just hate that one part. Okay, which part? Yeah. Yeah, and that's not something that happens all the time. It's just an interesting thing to notice here. In fact, in fact, go, go with me for a minute. What would I do here? What did we say we would do here? Rationalize. Rationalize. So this would become what? Root three over six. Yeah. And in fact, I'm gonna have to do that everywhere, aren't I? Because isn't there gonna be a root three on the bottom of every term? So that root three is just multiplying to rationalize. We're just gonna do it once. Forever, we're just gonna do it once. Not infinitely many times. We're just gonna do it this once. Maybe. No, three is not four. Uh, so that one step, if that's the only thing you have trouble with, I'm happy, I'm a happy person. Well, because I'm just confused because if you plug in a 3 there and you take out the, you know, square root of 3, then don't you, don't you still have 3 to the power of negative, eight? I don't even know. <laughs> so I, I took 1 half is still up there and x to the negative and I took it down there. Oh. So that's why this became 6 because now I have n 3s and n 2s. I... I misread the board. I thought I thought the two n just showed up, not the x to the n. I was. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just... all right, all right. And again, that last step I just did is a weird step. It just is a quirk of this specific problem. You with me? Not something you have to always look for, but I, now it's in your brain that that's a possibility in the future if you're ever doing other Taylor series stuff. That's something you might want to kind of like break out. And the reasoning is. If there's something that's not independent, you do want to pull it aside because then it's going to be a constant. 
that you can factor out. It's going to be sitting in front of my series. Yes. So I noticed that when we were building the series, you didn't like end up evaluating any of the derivatives at three. Is nope. that something that we ideally like want to be doing? No, not for me. Okay. There are other teachers that do that. But when you do that and you actually simplify things, yeah. you get further away from being able to see the pattern. Okay. I saw this pattern, and you guys helped me. You help me see the pattern pretty easily. The weird thing about this specific problem is we had to ignore the first two terms. And then this pattern, does everybody agree that the pattern we see, it's very easy to see it's going to continue forever. right? I'm going to pick up another two, and then I'm going to pick up another odd number every time. So that's basically what we captured. Pick up another two, pick up the next odd number. Yes. This is kind of like a side note, but why did you choose to change um, you know, the power over x from um, one half minus n to one minus two n over two. I just showed it to people in case they didn't see the one half minus n. Okay. If you look at this, these powers, the top is odd, yes? Oh, yeah, I get it. And the it. bottom okay. is a two. Yeah, yeah. You see, so there's another way to look at it. And that simplifies to be one half minus n, same thing. Yeah. Just to show you, you don't have to look at it one specific way to get the end result. We still have other, so much other shit. This is just this, okay. right? The nice thing is everything else is basically. Um, yeah. There's not, there's not like that much left to do. Well, to, to be numbers. honest, we're we're done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this will be pop on two numbers. Let me see. And in fact, four and x minus two. Um, sucks that it's way down here. Let me see. Um, seven. Uh, plus the sum. N equals what? Two. Right? I'm starting at the second. Can't I take this square root of three out? Yeah. That's nice. And then inside I just get Fn, which is all this business. Negative one, n minus one, one times three times five, two n minus three, all over six to the n. And then so that's F, that's this. We got that. Mm -hmm. N factorial, uh, x minus 3 to the n. If you want to, you can put this in the bracket. And of course, this has got to be. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. If you're putting it over n factorial, you wouldn't multiply by our first one? What is multiply? What do you mean? I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. really want you to see what we did. This is something you've been doing for a while. This is called a construction approach. I constructed this. Bam. And then the other piece, to be honest, there's no construction. It is this. Bam. And it is this. Bam. But I constructed this, and I just put it there. How do I construct this? Take the derivatives, find a pattern, and then plug in what you're, what you're building it around. Now, I said before, if, if all the problem said was find T3, what does T3 mean, for example? Anybody know? The tail she used to go out to n equals 3. Give me, does this book define it as n equals 3 or the three terms? I think this book defines it as n equals 3. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. So it's the third Taylor polynomial. Yeah. So then you could just, you don't care about that. No. You could just get the numbers and plug them in and be done with it. You don't care about the series then, they're telling you to stop. Yeah. So you don't care about the infinite part. Yeah. So then you could just plug the numbers in. I'm suggesting, instead of plugging the numbers in and then going crazy looking at it, <laughs> get this pattern you can see from the derivatives themselves, okay. and then the last thing you do then is plug a three in. Yes. Okay. Does it really, is it really always difficult if you don't do it this way? No. It isn't. Sometimes it's easy to see the numbers. Okay. So what I want you to notice, all right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase this stuff up here. I need some room. I'm going to bring this up. And I want to, I want to point out one thing about this. You see how I can take a square root of 3 out of everything? Right? Doesn't have any other square root of 3 in it? 
the Taylor series for um, f of x equals square root of x looks like, what do you do? Square root of three times one plus um, one sixth x minus three plus the sum n equals two. Infinity, all this business here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh my gosh. result when I put the thing that I built it around three. All this is an adjustment term. It's, an, it's like a, uh, a multiplying factor to adjust if I, if I leave three a little bit, if I go a little bit further from three. I don't know if you guys see what I'm saying. So you get square root of three here. The rest of it is sort of like a um, uh, an adjustment if x is not perfectly three. So the linear approximation, so let's, let's try something else. So number seven says, try, tell me what 2.97 is using the result, right? Correct to what three decimal places, whatever. So let's do this in stages. So if I look at the first term, I get square root of three, right? Okay, that's pretty close to square root of 2.97, right? What's the next? term I pick up. Plus root 3 over 6 uh, times x minus 3. So if you put a 2.97 in, oh, right. Yeah. Right? 2.97 is the x value for this, correct? 2.97 minus 3? Negative 0. 0.03. Good. All right, somebody help me out. What is that already? Are you multiplying by root 3, though? Where? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot I took it out. <laughs> I'm putting it back in. Okay. Times your thing. Let me let me do this. Okay, that's what I have in mind. Okay. All right. So what is that so far? Negative. Thanks. It's pretty good. <laughs> I think I think you're at this. Your two decimal places. You need one more term. What somebody get? Negative zero point zero zero. Whoa! Wait. Why? What? Whoa! whoa. You, I, did you just do this piece? Yeah, just that piece. Sorry. So do the whole thing. Sorry. Yeah. So the square root of three minus what you just said. 1.7 something. <laughs> right. uh, 1.72. Three, three, three. Three. Okay. And then what would the next term be? Oh, yeah. um, so not, what's n now? Uh, two. two. Okay. So if n equals two, I get negative one. And negative one. Well, n equals two, terrible. N equals two would be four minus three is one. Oh, so just one, not three. One. Okay. So minus one over 36 Good. times two. Two. Uh, and then that's going to be two, uh, root 2.97. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, no. Oh, right, right. You already figured that out. Uh, the two. input is three to the second power. And this says minus, that's why this is minus three. So 2.97 right. minus three is negative point of three to the second power. Okay, good. Yes. So that's just a further adjustment. So look what it makes sense. Is, do you guys see how every term is going to be minus? Three. Because yeah. I stop, I, I start at square root of three, and of course I've got to subtract, and I just subtract, 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 trying to get closer to what square root of 2.97 is. Maybe, maybe. So what is all of this now? So that was this much. What is all of this much? Times the square root of three. Oh, I think I have that somewhere. One, it still could be like one nine eight four. No, no, no. It still should be like one point seven something. One point seven two three three six. The total? Yeah. Oh, not multiplying by root three. Yeah, definitely multiplying by root three. Yes. Oh, so what the heck? Okay. So what do you guys think? Um, where did this Where did this number change when I added that next? When I put that next? Uh, 
for an integer. The fifth. Yeah, you know, way down, one, two, three, four stay the same, so it changed in the fifth decimal place. So I feel really good. The next term is going to be even further out. So do you think we're good to three decimal places? Yeah. Shit, okay. yeah. In fact, what is the square root of 2.97? 1.723 dot dot dot. 1.723 three, three, six, eight, seven, nine. And that's, look at that. I mean, that's, that's already pretty close. Why did we so quickly get there? Because... Oh, wow. We're close to close we're close to three. Close to three. Yeah. So if I try to use this using two point seven, it takes slightly longer. I'd probably have to use a few more elements. Does that make sense? Now we can figure out the radius of convergence for this thing, right? And to do the radius of convergence, these things don't mess you up at all. Just forget about these things. What matters is that guy, right? I don't know if any, I didn't really ask for that in this problem. So you could have stopped. I figured this problem is hard enough already. You could have stopped after the second term. Because you're already at the fifth, the fourth place. So yeah, but we didn't know. know. Right, right. We with, with what we have, assuming you don't know what this is, mm -hmm. we, and, and do you understand how this problem is kind of lame? And I understand it is kind of lame. <laughs> because you, because check, you have to use the calculator to figure out what square root of 3 is. And then you're like, well, I just use the damn thing through it. Okay. So this is kind of lame. We normally like to build things. If we're going to do stuff by hand, I would have done A equals 4. But then it gets lost that the actual value is here, and then you can see that this is all just kind of like a multiplying adjustment based on how far off you are from, from making it square root of 3. Right. It's really in your face then. This is what it is if you use 3. This is what happens if you don't use 3. Right? This is the multiplying factor to kind of adjust for it. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably just me that finds that interesting. I'm used to that. Okay. All right, um, okay, okay. So that one was weird. So we did 6a and 7, The 7 came right off of 6a. And again, just to remind you guys, there were a couple things in that problem that were definitely weirder than what you're gonna have to be able to do yourselves. But I just wanna start exposing you to all the different little adjustments that might have to be taken into account. And by the way, I, I told a few of you guys that were in the Math Study Center, I actually wrote to TI a while back to ask them what their modified Taylor series algorithm looks like for the calculator. And they thought I was from like HP or something, like I was trying to get some insider information. And I'm like, no, I'm just a teacher. All right, and they just wouldn't give me anything. I'm like, all right, well, shoot. So that's how they do, I think I told you this, when you do sine x, they have a modified Taylor series built around certain points. So when you put something in, it picks which one to use. Because there's not enough memory in it to just memorize sine of 1.001, sine of 1.002. So, yeah. Would you do sine like of a really big number instead of getting like, you get like B something, something, something? What do you mean? Sorry. Like it start, the algorithm like messes it up so like. It oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, 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 yeah. It draws from a table. Yeah. Once you get to really big. There's numbers, a whole like, website of yeah. different inputs for different functions based on the algorithm that it uses that will mess it up. All right, all right, that was admittedly a difficult, weird problem. The process doesn't care about any of that shit, right? And I'm gonna give you, let, let, let's do 6B. Did anybody try 6B out? Let's look at 6B, because that's gonna be closer to the kind of problem I give you. Um, I don't think it's right, but I got something along the lines of negative one to the n and factorial x to the I, negative n minus one, which I think is part of Neato. All right, let's see. I don't know what you just said, but we'll see. Um, sorry. Didn't we do uh, 6b in class last time? No, I don't think we did. We I have, have, you can do any practice class. Oh, I have notes of 6b for some reason. Neato. Um, Neato. Get your signal. It's got some ESP going on. And it doesn't, it doesn't look like my own thought process, so I'm really confused. Minority, minority report. I'm make this. Well, because I'm looking at this, and this is this is not my own thought process. This is something I did with someone else. So I don't think we did this. No. Okay. Let's attack this with the process. Is this a McLaurin series? No. So I just start doing. The first thing I do is just do the derivatives. Negative x to the negative two. Okay, okay. Negative 1 over x squared. 2 over x cubed. 
Six over x to the fourth. I, I, I did it. I don't know. That should be enough to kind of see the pattern, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so this one's... I'm telling you, this is the class. You guys agree? Yeah. This one's much nicer. Top is n factorial. And this is an example. If you plug the numbers in, it's not going to be difficult to tell, but I might as well capture the pattern right now. So this is when n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. The top is n factorial. Negative 1 to the n, n factorial. Yes, yeah, do the negative part first. The negative 1 to the n, n times n factorial. And you can see that. So when n is 0, 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, and so forth. Yeah. And you can see, again, this is different from some sequence I give you, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need, I can see what is going to happen. I can see that it will continue to happen in the same way. So I only need a few elements to know what's gonna happen, right? Uh, you guys got it with me? Over x to the n plus one. Very different than you guys writing a few elements out saying, it's always yeah. decreasing. Well, no, it isn't, oh shit, right? Because I can see how these are generated. They follow a given process, so I can see the pattern much quicker. Yeah. Um, and then on the bottom, of course, x to the n plus 1. Yeah. No, because when n equals 3, it's just. Yeah. Oh, it's always one more than the, the n, yeah. Cool. Much better. Right. Much better than the last problem. But it, it's the exact same process we used for the last problem. We just had that little adjustment. No, I mean that's this. So remember, what are we working for? So here's the Taylor, the Taylor polynomial needs series. Sorry, needs. Yeah, the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial. Yeah, you, you just need n of everything, right? But you have a lot of those parts, though. Hmm. So let's see. Um, what is f? Evaluated, well, let me see. Let me put instead of a, a is 2. So, what is fn evaluated at 2? All that, but it's Yeah, that's all that does. Exactly. This is almost too much to believe. The factorials are going to cancel. So, so now we've got, uh, we, again, we constructed what we needed. So I can just throw that in. It's always too nice to believe. So this is the sum n equals 0 to infinity, uh, negative 1 to the n. I'm going to just put this here for a moment. So that's fn. Wait, sorry. When you have a factorial on the bottom, too. Well, I, that's fn. Oh. Now I'm going to write the rest of it. Oh, OK. okay. Uh, and factorial. So this is fn, yep. and factorial, minus 2 to the n. So immediately, like somebody said earlier, this cancel is awesome. Yes? So if fn is on the top and it's divided by n factorial, why aren't you dividing the whole fn by n factorial and putting it on the top? I did. Ah. I totally did. Um, how do I say this? Uh, 7 times 5 divided by 11, all divided by 3. How? Bring it up. What do you mean? Divided by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by? One third. One third. Right, it's, okay. yeah. if you, it's the radius in. Is that cool? So, so if I put all this over that, it's the same thing as just putting in factorial on the bottom. I really want this to make sense. I'm dividing 35 by 11 and by 3. Oh, so, of course, I'm dividing 35 by 33. Right? I'm cutting it into 11 and then I'm cutting those into 3 pieces. So, I'm cutting them into 33 pieces. And again, it's not just you, trust me, it, it, it's, it's a weird thing. We don't see a lot of uh, fractions, right? Fractions inside of fractions, yes. Do we have to memorize like, the, um, the Taylor series like forming all sort of Yes, things? you have to know, uh, well, you know, F to the N. this without the T, the A, yeah. And again, it's got a lot of, it's all night. Everything's N, which is awesome. So you just got to remember it's N derivatives, N factorials, and N powers. No, right? So Sorry. Then, yes. 
So we're looking for like ready to converge. Just, we just go straight to ready to convert. For the most part, <laughs> there were there was at least one problem in that section that you could use the root test on because it just everything was doing that power. But um, yeah, if I see a piece that's dependent on n or just a piece that's not having an nth power, I'm not going to use a root test, right? But if, I, if everything's n power, I'm going to use root. I can use a root test. I don't have to do ratio tests. Yeah, we're just going to put our feet down. Yeah, here you can because you can just take the two one two out. Then you can have the parts that are just to an end power. Yes. All right. So what do we got? We got. And over two. Yeah. One times X. Pages so itchy. Could you top out like a one half? Yeah. Totally. Okay. I like it. And let's see. How do I check this? If I'm a student taking a damn test that the crazy ass cow teacher gave me, how do I test this? I have my phone in my lap, and I hope Jeff doesn't see the glare. And I go to somewhere. And evaluate I the no, start of evaluate. Start huh? evaluating at the derivative that you. No, no, no. Oh. We can do this. What's this guy's purpose? To approximate one over x. One over x. Yeah. And when does it work? When is it supposed to work pretty well? When x a. equals two. Close to two. Okay. It's going to work perfectly at two. I want to. So let's put a value in to this. Do it. And then put it in this shit. 1.97. All right. So we got 1.9. Can we make it different? It was 2.97 for the other one. Let's 1. try 8. something above it. Let's do 2.3. Oh, one. One. You guys want to? Let's do 2.1. It's 2.1, 2.4. Something not too close. Let's see what happens. All right. So I'm going to compare <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> Did a squirrel just went for you? What happened? I don't know. A dog just ran through. Um, so 1 over 2.1. Let's get what that is. What is 1 divided by 2.1? Oh, so let's do a few terms of this series. So this would be the end of the problem. We've done. And now if you have time, you can sort of just pick a value and see if you get the right thing from this. If you have time. Um, somebody give me a few elements of this. Let me write it over here. N equals zero. What have we got? Yeah, one over two. That's it. <laughs> uh, n equal, and why does that make sense? Because when x is zero, isn't every term, every other term is going to have this. When x is two, it's supposed to be one half, and that's the only term that doesn't have an x in it. Okay. Um, okay. So n equals one. So what do we get so far? What am I going to put here? Uh, it's 0.1. 2.1. So I'm going to end up with 0.1 basically everywhere I see an x minus 2. Do you guys see that? Yep. Just automatically think 0.1 when you see that in this problem. So it's 1 half minus 1 fourth of 0.1 minus 2. It's like 0.025. It's like is it 0 0.025, 0 0.0475. Somebody doing that? Is that what you got? Anybody doing that for me? No? No. Math boy, come on. One fourth would be 0 0.25. Uh, 0 0.1 one fourth is 0 0.025. 0 0.5 minus 0.025 is 0 0.475. So we're already close. But again, we're assuming we don't know this. So what's the next term going to be? 1 over 8 times 0.1 squared. Yeah, so like 0.01. Yeah. So now I take 0.475, and I add uh, 0.018s, which is 0 0.00125. 0.00125. Second T 
So then if I do one more, you'll, probably get, like, you'll get the first three of the same. So you'll at least have it in three places, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I give you a problem, I say four places, three places, whatever, this is how you do it. You just do the first two terms, see what you got, do the next term, see how much it changes. It should feel a lot like Newton's method. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to bring that up if that's a bad memory. Mm -hmm. Did anybody like Newton's method? I don't um, remember no, Newton's no, no, no. method. That's all right. So, yeah. so the farther you go away from the from the A, the more terms you're going to take to get to that. Yeah, in general. Nice whatever the function is, whatever. But for a given function, the further you are away from what you built it around, the more terms you're going to need to be closer to the answer. So point one is like actually a lot for like a method like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a lot for a ill-behaved function. This is a relatively well-behaved function. So, uh, but if I had like a sine function that, that was really compressed, you know, that's a really not well behaved function. So if I move just a little bit, I'm like way the hell off. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really good. Oh yeah. I think that's what I meant to make number five. <laughs> when uh, copying and pasting. Uh, but yes, there will be some from like 11, 9, I think it was, where they started saying, you have a given series, can you adjust it in like you know, derivatives like or integrals? Like one minus something. Say again? It would be like ln of one minus yeah, one. Yeah, there's a problem in the homework, I think it's ln of phi minus x. Yeah. So, and that of course comes from the integral of the known thing that you have to adjust first, yeah. So then, with stuff like that, we just take the derivative. Yes, the C. Like a thing yeah. that we can work with, and then integrate the series to get what we need to work. So do you guys want to do that problem? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. All right. I don't think I You're like, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna ask about that next. You can do it. Derive. I don't remember what I did. Yeah. I think for the natural log one, you just derive. He said, when I told him about that, he said there was a problem that he helped you with, or you like responded like, oh my god, I'm gonna go tell them they're all wrong. <laughs> what problem was that? I said that? He said you said that. What do we know here? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> what do we know here? I guess we were all wrong. It wouldn't be unusual. We were just all wrong. You don't have to memorize it, but I mean, this is basically a uh, geometric series thing, right? Mm -hmm. S equals A over 1 minus R. Right. So, um, if I take the derivative of this, it tells me what I need to take the integral of. So, if I take the derivative of this, it'll be roughly in that form. Then I can make a power series for the, what that is and integrate it to come back to this. Does that make sense? So what is the derivative of this? Yes. And of course, what do you have to do with that to so adjust it? Take out a, a, a one, one fifth. fifth, a negative one fifth. Yeah. One Yeah. Uh, the negative power is here. here. So if you decide to leave, like, uh, if you divide by 5 and you try to like, divide everything by 5, can you leave like, one fifth of A and like, the geometric series to put this in the next? You got that? It's up to you. Okay. It's easier the closer I get it to that form, because okay. then I don't have to throw anything on top of that. I can just do that directly. So I can just pull every other thing that keeps it from being close to that form there. Any constants, right? So now I can write this in series form. Right. Yeah, just replace <coughs> x with x over 5. I love it. And then what do I do with that? Well, I differentiated this to get here, so I have to integrate this to get that. Okay, I like it. So when I integrate this, so f of x should equal the integral. This. 
X squared over 10. What? To the n power? X over 5 n plus 5? At all over, all to the n plus 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, X to the n plus 1. It's just the definition of power rule, right? Yeah. 5 to the n. Plus C, right? You were wrong. But now we have a way to figure out what C is. This makes more sense. Right? What is F of 0? ln of 5. So we know F of 0 equals ln of 5 equals. What do I get when I put a 0? When n is 0, what is this? 0 plus C. When n is 0, oh, yeah. one, 1 plus C. X over stuff, right? And then I get more and more and more X's. So when X is 0, all of the terms here become zero. 0. So then natural log 5 equals C. Do you guys see that? If I know the function I'm working with, and I get the Taylor series from it, I can actually use what this is at 0 to figure out what C is. Yes? Can you go back to doing the integral part for a second? I just didn't understand how to do it. Everything here doesn't matter except for that because that's the only thing that has the variable in it that I'm trying to integrate with respect to. Everything else is basically a constant according to the integral. So what is the integral of x to the n? By definition, x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And everything else just comes for the ride, right? So notice that. When you're integrating, you just care about the x piece. Everything else, I don't care how weird it looks, it's all freaking constant. It just comes for the ride, yeah. So then to find the, the radius of convergence, would you a ratio test that? Yes. Okay. And the great thing is, you don't care about that, you don't care about that. Yeah. And I really want this to make sense. This is not, well, all right, let me say it this way. Uh, the radius of convergence is sort of related to a domain. Because what's the domain for a function? Um, all the values that, that work. <laughs> yes? Why is the domain of 1 over x minus 1 not include 1? Because 1 don't work. If I try to plug it in, I don't get a valid output. Are you guys with me? So the domain is the set of all x's that make the thing work. What is interval of convergence? Isn't it the set of all x's that make the series work? It makes it do what it's supposed to do, correct? I really want you to be with me on this because um, what's the domain of this again? I mean, everything except one? What's the domain of this? So a multiple doesn't do shit to domain questions, right? Some multiple doesn't do a damn thing to a domain question. So I don't care about this. It's just a multiple. Who cares? Right? So then I, can, I just have to look at this. You don't have to bring anything else with you. In fact, you can't bring anything else with you. Maybe? So if I wanted to do, let's do this. If I want to do, in fact, I think it's part of the question, right? To find the radius of convergence. Yeah. OK, so it would be the limit of infinity. Oh, I forgot about that. I still have to talk about this. Let me put this down there. This is a pet peeve of mine for the homework. Um, and then I just look at this piece. Plus two over uh, one, yeah. plus two times two. Right, what do we got here? Here. Uh, five on the bottom. All right. So This limit here is one. Well, let's see. Let's see. Equals x over five, which needs to be less than one. Multiply by five. Yeah. And it's minus five plus five. Yeah. Can you show testing endpoints too? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's test I, these I, endpoints. 
So we know everything between negative five and five, not including those at the moment, definitely make this series do what it's supposed to do. What does the series exist for? To be passed the buck. No. What does the series exist for? To find the proof. Approximate the given function, right? The natural log of five minus seven. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, for this question specific, it only asks for the radius of convergence, so we don't have to check the endpoints, right? right? I just wanted to see what that is. I know, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, if it only asks for radius, just... you're technically right. Okay. Radius is fine. Well, you don't let's, let's, let's just do it. Let's try it. So if I want to use negative 5, what do I do to test that? Well, you just say negative 5 minus 7. Plug it in. Plug it into this, yeah. Everything else really doesn't matter, so... Um, they're all still there, but it doesn't really change anything in terms of my the heart of my what I'm looking at. So let's see, we get negative five to the n plus one over five to the n, n plus one. So we're gonna get a negative one dependence. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. I get a negative one, I get a summation symbol. Negative one can cancel. Times five to the n, the five to the n's cancel, leaving with one five. Is that cool? Does that, can you just tell if that converges? Yes. yes. Yeah, so totally. It's, it's a if it's decreasing, harmonic. it's positive. We've done enough of these. If it's harmonic, but it has a negative one depend, uh, alternating part, then it's converging. Yeah. Right, because it meets all the requirements. By itself, without the negative dependence, it's adding to itself forever, so that goes crazy. If I let it subtract itself to every other term, then it's fine. Okay. So this works, so it's gonna be at least this. Now, can somebody see what's going to happen if I just put a positive 5, I don't get the negative dependence. Then it's just harmonic. Mm -hmm. That is purely harmonic, which is done. So that would be like that. Sweet. So anything could happen with the endpoints. They could work, they could both work, they could both not work. One could work, the other blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe? And by the way, if you do an absolute convergence test and it comes out um, not absolutely convergent, does that mean it's conditionally convergent? No. It can be. It can be. What does it mean for you in terms of work? You have more work to do? Yes. Normally, you're going to have to do some kind of alternating series test. It depends on what the alternating part looks like. Yes. Can we do an example of like absolute versus conditional convergence? Uh, sure. Uh, we basically just did. Yeah, that was. <laughs> um, just to make it more, I think, uh, you really want to talk about this. That's one of those things where, like, when we're talking about it, is if L equals zero, then it's inconclusive and we have to use some other test. L equals one. L equals one, yeah. Yeah, or L yeah, is equal to one, not zero. You're thinking about limit comparison. <laughs> too many limit tests. Too many tests. So many I know, I know. I know. Okay, that, I agree, is the worst part of this, is uh, all the tests have different kind of ways to look at it. There's two that have the same, at least, two that have the same, at least, two that have the same. Ratio and root test. Mm -hmm. That's got to be true. has to be less than yes. one. L's got to be less than one. Limit is, limit is going to be zero to infinity, right? Zero to infinity, not including zero or infinity. Yeah. Right? Which, in this case, including infinity actually kind of makes sense, right? Um, yes? So, um, if it doesn't ask if it's absolutely converging or not, can you just do alternating series? Yeah, if it, technically, if it just says, does this series converge? And it's alternating, and you just do alternating series and say it converges, that's fine. I have to be more specific if I want you to do that. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? If I give you, so, all right, so this is related to the question that we just asked. If I just ask you, does this converge? You just have to do alternating series tests. Now to be honest, I would actually rather do the absolute value, the absolute convergence test because can you guys see what this is basically going to be? Maybe one over n squared. Maybe one over n squared. Let me make that a plus L still, so it's all three. Um, yeah, it's gonna be one over n squared basically, right? So in this, there are cases where doing the, abs the absolute convergence tests will be easier. I mean, especially when it's like a P-series or something. Um, 
So about that, like absolute and conditional convergence, on our test, if it's absolutely convergent, should we write absolutely convergent? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, real quick, okay, so <laughs> the question is more related to this. Is that absolutely convergent? No. Because if you try to do absolutely Wait, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Well, but it's no. like we it's, can see it's where harmonic. it's going to go. But we can see where it's going to go. It's conditionally convergent. Yeah. That is basically. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That's that is equivalent to what? Uh, negative one, one over n, 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 n to the n. n. Negative one to the n. One over n. Over n. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> That's why I love the quiz. The quiz, you gave us a question. Um, that was, you asked for conditional convergence. It was like, test for conditional yeah, yeah, convergence. Yeah. And it was absolutely convergence. Yeah, and I, I yeah. saw that right away, so yeah. I was just. That was, that was actually really beautiful. So I asked for conditional, and, and it was, and like I just said, there was a problem, the other problem we just did. It was easier to show absolute convergence, which inherently means, if you let every other term be negative, it's obviously gonna converge also. Yeah. So yeah, it, um, if I ask you for conditional convergence, you're like, oh shit, I don't feel like doing all the derivatives and all this shit. Wait a minute, absolute not, it's converging. Okay, do that. Right? Beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. Yes. If we got this question on a test and we said this seems like it's going to be negative one to the n over n, can, and just go off of that, can we just do that, or do we have to show our work getting to that point? Oh no. no so we're at the point. Mm -hmm. We are at the point where it's okay. We've done enough of these direct comparison, all that kind of bullshit. <clears throat> uh -huh. This is basically one of our right? Because when n gets really big, this does nothing. Right. But we. There are other uses of the skills you had to develop to do like uh, direct comparison when you had to develop the, the line of inequalities. Uh -huh. That involves skills that are really useful later. Even if you don't have much further to go math, I don't care. I gotta teach as if you do, right? <laughs> um, anyway. So this one, so real quick, whoever asked me that question, does it converge absolutely? No. 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 It's, it's related to a P series or harmonic series, yeah. Um, does it converge conditionally? Yes. In this case, how would you tell if it converges conditionally? You would have to officially use alternating series test. Alternating series test. I'm not going to make you do as much work, but you still have to state that it meets the conditions. Don't just go, I guess the, yeah, well. <laughs> So, what are the conditions? Decreasing. Positive. So obviously for n greater than one, n greater than equal to one is positive. <coughs> Check. Decreasing. 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 And then it's zero. So you technically you'd have to do the whole derivative thing, but you're guaranteed at some point, even if it's not at first decreasing. What would you say? What would you say to back up that claim? The bottom is definitely a higher degree than the top, so at some point it's got to start approaching. It's got to start decreasing forever. Bottom, degree, right at the top, check. Limit is zero. Yeah, and the limit is zero, and that's pretty easy to see. Yeah. And cube over n to the fourth plus blah, blah, blah. It's roughly one over n, so it puts it two. I mean, that's, the, that's where we are. You should be able to, you, you have to show me something. You have to explain something related to the requirements. You can't just go, can't just go plus, check, decreasing, check, limit, zero, check. No, 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 no. I mean, tell me something, tell me something. Everybody with me? You don't have to do the full derivative, you don't have to do Locutal's rule and all that kind of stuff. Yes? Isn't that just a alternating series test and it doesn't tell you if it absolutely converges? Did we check for absolute convergence? Yes, did we just do it? Did we just check for absolute? Yeah. Yes, and it didn't. So now I gotta go back and check for condition. So does it conditionally converge? Yes. Yes, by the AST. Conditionally converges. Con con. So a lot of your homeworks, you can see me saying type, type, type. I mean, if you just write convergent, if it's a kind of problem they have to differentiate, you know, type, type, type. Conditional or absolute. Yes? So can we test for absolute convergence before we test for conditional? That's what I would do. Because okay. if absolute works, you're done. If you start with conditional, if it works, you're not done. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. Let me give you guys the keys. I've got some time to flip that over before you head out. The keys.
he is spread across two pieces of paper. <coughs> Are we getting into your building? A what? Are you getting into your building? Sorry? Are you getting into your building? Oh, review days, that's completely up to you guys. Right? On review days, you can come in, look at me, and go, I know this shit, and leave. <laughs> right? I, I, One Be sure you get yeah. both pages. Better you might have just gotten the same. Oh, wait. I just got the You'll same get it. Page. Yeah, he got the second page. Yeah. There you go. Pass him back. There we go. We're gonna we're gonna make it, guys. Second page. Thank you. Um, what? When you're done with that, I have a question. Oh, I've been asking about our question. Yeah. I got you in this one. You went over to Jordan there. Oh, you did it. Oh, you next to you over there. Oh, there was a cat. I forgot that like, uh, uh, that the is uh, any, uh, not that it's a limited yeah. Oh, yeah. Since it's after the conversion, answer the question. It must also be the So that was beautiful to do that. I mean, you know, so let me know if I got all these right. Aren't you working on this? Is that an articulation agreement? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, Are you checking the test Okay. Um, <laughs> she is correcting the test <laughs> Um, can we look at question 18 on homework 11.9? Yeah. <laughs> if you were in Lil Need's class, she'd be like, I don't feel like it, man. That's a bad question, okay? It's a really rough question that I hope that we do not have anything similar on the test. I literally, you know, that Real quick, okay. I've been trying to keep track of this. Real quick, before I do your question now. Um, there was a homework problem. Do you remember which one I went with? It's basically, it had like a <laughs> no. A natural on the K or something. Yeah, we yeah. talked about it like a lot. Did we? A lot. Yeah. Which one? But I don't think we talked specifically about. You said the effect. I, I don't remember, sorry. Um, I had a lot of people tell me this. So it was like Fine. over K plus one cubed or something crazy. I told, a lot of people told me this was less than equal to this. That makes no sense. No. Well, ln of k right? is you guys with me? Infinity. Natural log of k is bigger than 1 for every value of k that is bigger than... What is natural log of k? 1. E. E. And e is like 2.71. So 
how often is this untrue in this series? Not, not very often. Basically forever, it's not true. Yeah. Right, it's only true for one and two. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Or zero, one, and two. Mm -hmm. You guys understand? So that's a huge thing to me. In fact, such a huge claim because it's wrong, right? So, uh, okay. So there's something you have to be careful about how to work that problem. I can't remember which one it was. I don't know 27. If anybody, 27 and? 11, seven. 11, seven, okay. Thank you. So if you did something like this, you are not alone. Several people did that. I think the reason you did that is because I said this being here doesn't affect the growth rate of the top as if it wasn't there. That doesn't mean that this is less than that. It's not, definitely not true because this is k times something bigger than one for almost every term, right? So this is definitely not generally true. Mm. Would you say 27? Yeah. Yeah, 27 and 11, 7. Maybe. I think that's why, because the natural log does not contribute to the growth rate appreciably, but it totally makes the value bigger. K okay. is always greater than natural log of K, right? Yes. So, okay, so you can work with that. Yeah. You could do maybe something with that. It's 11.6. So I kind of did something similar. I did direct comparison and ended up with a natural log of k over k squared is less than square root of k. Yeah, we did that in class. Yeah, but how would we go from there? Oh, all the stuff from last time. Well, you have to, all right. What you could do, to be really honest, William, I can't remember how deep we got into it. I remember talking about it a little bit. I think we like almost finished the problem. almost certain that we said, I said, you'd have to show this to me. Oh yeah, natural log of k is less than k to the one half. So the way to show this, this is kind of interesting. If you can show that it's true for some value, right? So let's say um, three. What is this true? So natural log of three versus three to the one half. That's the first whole number, it's true. So what's the natural log of three? What's three to the one half? Show that that, that inequality holds. Are you guys with me so far? Square root of three is like 1.75 or something, I think. Natural log of three is like 1.098. What is it? 1.098. 1.098. Sounds about right. So 1.098 versus 1.7 something. 732. Then take the derivatives. It's funny. If this slope is always, um, how do I say, smaller than this slope, that means this is increasing slower than this is, which means that if it starts off less than this, it remains less than this forever. That's one way to do it. Right. Or you can use math induction. No. <laughs> or you could. Can Dutch you do it using math induction? induction? Don't ask him that. I'm just curious. I just want to see it. What? Can you do it, the method with math induction? Yeah. I can do it if we're done. I'll do that last thing if everybody's done asking questions. I just wanted oh, yeah. to ask. So, I just want to ask. So, Ricardo, make sure you're. Do you want me to put a math induction problem on the test? No. No. So actually, never mind then. I was just kidding. I can answer that question. After we got everything else, it's going to be on the test. All right, let's start with okay. If eight, you want me to do it right now, I will put a math induction eight, 18, on 11.9. Oh, I'm with you. Right <laughs> Say again? 18 on 11.9. <laughs> the desperation in your voice. <laughs> Because we were talking about it at the beginning of class too, before anyone got oh, here, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> I was like, let's wait till Carmen gets here, because Carmen, Carmen brings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, is it x over two minutes x squared? Well, cubed. 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 Any other suggestions on what this might be related to? Okay. Say again? Okay. No, no, no. Okay, so the question here is, this is from 11.9, um, and this was, uh, um, use a known power series to find the power series for this. So that would be through derivatives or uh, integration. So any suggestions on what to try to do first? Uh, three times. Sure, take three times, sounds good. Is that any other suggestions you want to put out there? So we got one suggestion is take three minutes until we go crazy. Okay. Why would you say ignore the power? Divide the inside by two and set it up as the one over one. Okay, sure.
pure, but maybe there's an X on top. Yeah, but you can just bring To be really in. honest, Dave, I want to, I want to, you can bring it up. This. If I had this, I could write the Taylor series for this and then multiply it by itself. Three times. Three times, yeah. Right. If I wanted to. And they have an example of multiplying an infinite polynomial well, times another infinite polynomial. Yeah. And at least gathering the first few terms, right? <laughs> totally doable. Um, I don't think that's what you have to do here, but I don't know. <laughs> so did somebody else have a, a different suggestion? You want to try to start doing this? Let's do the derivative. No. Let's, let's chop off x cubed. What, did you have another suggestion? Um, is it possible to try and find the, the series ignoring x cubed and like... Okay, good. I like it. Okay. So one thing is take your two. Like You've seen possible? enough of these the where it's a multiple of some power of x, right? So that's the last thing you would do. You'd make a power series for this and then you just increase the x's by three in this case. So what am I left with inside? One over, one over x. x. And then you can have x. And I can just write it like this. Bam. Mm. Right? Yeah. And then okay. that you can act, can't you just bring that three up to for the one time to the third power of three too? Say, say it again, sir. Could it just put the whole thing? Sure, somewhere? you could. Yeah. But I'm trying to bring it closer. He has mine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh. All right. Where do you think you might go from here? This, this feels pretty good when you pick a big, weird part out. It looks better. It looks better. You plot it one half. Um, okay. Well, let's see. If we do that, I don't like the I'm not going to pull a one half out because I, I don't have, I have more than one half. Oh, I have to pull two out three times. So one eight. What would it be? One minus x over two. Yeah. What? But I still have to worry about that third power, right? Yeah. Oh, do you, do you, you hit everything with the cube root? <laughs> no? No, because what's the cube root of f of x? I mean, you, you can't do it on both sides. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, so what about, I, I, let me throw a few, few things at you. What about uh, partial fractions? Uh, this piece is already yeah, yeah, that right at the bottom, yeah. right? What about derivatives or integrals? Integrals. If you integrate this a couple times, do you oh, see how it's gonna, then you get to one over two minus okay. x. Okay, so I mean, if I saw this problem, I would probably try the integration first. And I might kind of dabble in the partial fractions, I don't know. That would probably be exceptionally weird. It's gonna bring in some x's that you don't really need on the top. Would gross. you would you just integrate that um that function on the right there? But I thought you couldn't integrate that. No, the partial fraction wouldn't do anything, because this is basically what it would be. So we're just left with the integration. Yeah. Oh no, right, but if you You'd have to integ integrate the whole thing, right? Like the x cubed too. So here's the idea. Um, I'm trying. So I can take this problem and I can say I need a power series representation for this. Yeah. Because if I can get that, I'm going to put it here. So now I can just integrate this piece. Oh. So I'm going to okay. integrate it a couple times, more than likely, because it's a third power, and I want to get it to a first power on the bottom, right? Because then it's related to that. Does that make? Yes. So that's a couple of integrations gets me there. So then I'm going to have to do a couple of derivatives of what I get at the end. I really want to make sense. Why do I have to worry about this? Because I can focus on building the series for this. And then just multiply and by just cube. Plug it there and multiply by three x's. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's try one interval of this. And please, dear God, <laughs> that's the easiest shift. <laughs> okay. 7.3. What? What? <laughs> what are we saying? Uh, minus two over two minus x cubed. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be one over two minus x squared, but then I can adjust it a little bit. Yeah. Right. So I shouldn't have so if I take this derivative, a negative two would come down. I shouldn't have a negative two, so I'm gonna need this. Right. Right. Okay. And that basically. Yeah. Does it? And well, except for there's a negative in there. So it'll go back to positive. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, to check myself, I can just take this derivative and see if I get back to there. Right. Yes? Why well, couldn't we just take the derivative of the first x, x over 2 minus x? Q. Q. So you want to take this guy's derivative. 
you, you can try. Right. It'll be quotient rule. Uh, change. Right. It won't be very good. I really want you to see this is a couple of integrations away from being exactly like 1 over 1 minus x with some constants and shit in the way that we can take care of real easy. When, for the thing you have crossed out, why couldn't we just make the whole thing cubed and then basically just turn it into a power series and bring in x cubed and y? No, 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 no. Again, so if you make this whole thing cubed, yeah. you would have to cube the power series, which means I, I really want you to understand. Yeah. You have to write several terms out for the power series three times and then start foiling. Uh, until you're like bald. Okay. <laughs> so they do an example at the end of the section, I think. I can't remember where it is exactly. Maybe it's at the end of 11.8. I don't know where they do this crazy shit. Okay. But they, it's really kind of cool to be honest, um, where you, you do, uh, you start doing your first few terms. Um, kind of, you can tell how many are gonna give you the X to the whatever power, so you collect those, and then you try to see a pattern. Um, so then you'd have to make like a general thing from that. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, it's fussy. This doesn't matter because I'm going to take a couple of derivatives anyway. So I don't even really have to worry about it. So I must just put it there. And then I want to integrate this again, right? Do you see how one more integral is going to get it to where I need it to be? Is that is that all right? I'm not going to do it anymore. I really want to show one more interval, I'm going to have a plus CX plus D, but then I'm going to differentiate twice to get back to what I need, right? So again, what's happening? I want a power series for this. Okay, you get a power series for this, I've got to integrate it twice, get a power series for that, differentiate twice, and then I can plug that here. So there's no quick way to do it? No. Yeah, you guys with me? No. You guys? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so one more integral. So you, you're just going to have, and then it's going to be like, it's going to be nice. You got to trust me. Trust me. It's just the same thing, but without the two, right? Huh? Without the two? Like you, you take away the two, it goes out. Take away the two. I don't understand. Wait. wait. You integrate this one more time. Right. Right. <coughs> So it's going to be, so I'm going to put this down right now, and I'm going to adjust things. Yeah, that's it. Plus CX plus. Sure, are we done with this? Yeah. No. No. That's no. the same thing. Well, are we? We might be. I think we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Because that's a negative one. A negative one, but then there'd have to be a negative, negative on the inside. Point. Yeah. Okay. Plus CX plus D. Good. Boom. Why do these not scare me? Because I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a Taylor series for this. Yep. Take a derivative twice, and both of these will die. Awesome. Right? You guys see that? Yeah. That's why they have to technically be there, but they immediately die because I'm going to differentiate twice to get back. I really want you to understand. If I integrate this twice, represent this a different way, but it equals this, and I differentiate twice, aren't I right back to where I was? Yep. I've just written it in a different form. Yep. Okay. So that's the whole idea of 11 9 is to say, if you have a known Taylor series or McLaurin series, and you want to make one for this, you can kind of use what you know already to build that. So that's sort of the first step, because right now it's like the page 768. We actually know very few Taylor series. There's not a lot there. Right, we know a lot more functions than that. There's like eight, right? Something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Not eight. even eight. Not even eight. Wow. Um, but, each one of those, I could, some of them don't make sense, but some of those I could do integrations and derivatives. For example, sine and cosine. If I build sine and cosine, if I differentiate and integrate, it's going to get more sines and cosines. So that doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? I mean, it's not done but you should be able to see the where to go from here. Are there any problems like that on the test with like that much process? Could be. 
It's a lot of process. Oh, that's a lot of process? I used barely one fifth of the board. I'm sorry. A lot of process would be if there were boards all the way around the room. And then I have to go to the next room that everybody has to come with. Any Is there a chalkboard? 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 Oh, hell yeah. Really? I didn't tell you about that. There'd be multiple times my teacher would start. We had chalkboards all around the room. I remember when I first came in, I'm like, why are there chalkboards everywhere? And then the teacher came in, started over there, went all the way around, went over there, and he was like, and then this, and then he, remember over here, and he's like running around the room. Oh my God. That's awesome. So we were all just like rotating our chairs. <laughs> I would pay so much more attention if you were sprinting around the entire classroom doing stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, too bad. <laughs> um, anyway. So this is okay. Anything? I mean, I'm still engaged now. Anything else? Good that you're. It would go up. It would be even more. Yeah. Almost too much. 110. Percent. Almost too engaged. Get the spinny chairs they have in some of the rooms. And just like spin as you run. <laughs> <laughs> I want the chairs to be motion activated so they automatically. Like they follow you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a rotating <laughs> classroom. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 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 What if you get an expression of something raised to the n power? But it's raised to the n squared or something. Thank you. Oh, we've seen that before. Um, there was a problem. Let me see. It was something like uh, n to the 2 n over 1 plus n to the 3n. When you get it out. I don't know. Is, is this what you're. So everything is raised to n squared. Oh, wait, wait. So, like, maybe something like, um, like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, what do you do with that? Root. Root test. Okay. You root test. Because you can rewrite this as. You do it twice, though. No, you do it once, no, and that's no, no, no. an identity. Come on. Oh, you rewrite this. <laughs> you have to be test. squared. I'm so stupid. It's okay. Well, let's see. I forgot about the yeah. identity for like no, the no, no, no. Um, it's one plus one. Yeah, yeah. If you have this, you, you apply one root test. Oh, well, so that's going to be one over here. And that's going to converge. Where is that less than one? Yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. uh -huh. All right. I really want you to understand. The way I've written it is it's still a series. Uh, does this statement show a series? No. no. Nope. Yeah, it's an element of a sequence now. So whatever I get, I can't apply a series test to it because it's no longer a series. So when I put a limit here, it's not a series anymore. I'm looking at the general nth term. And I'm letting n go to infinity. So I'm looking at a specific term, and then I'm letting the term that I'm looking at increase to infinity. So I'm just kind of going, okay, that's what this does. So what happens here, of course? Who's it in? So that's why I don't blame you for wanting to do a, another root test, but I don't have a series anymore. I really want that to make sense. That's just here. So now I've just got an uh, expression in n. Um, so now I have to take this limit, and we know how to take this limit, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? You just, you just, you just take the limit, Jeff. Whatever. <laughs> it's obvious. One over e. Well, okay, because you can remember what's what's e equal to again. Uh, n one, plus one over. One plus one over n. Yeah, one plus one over n, which is also. Do we need n plus one over n? Right. We should probably remember. What did I say at the time? Did I say you had to memorize this? No. Did I say it's, 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 it's really should. smart to memorize this? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Is that, is that how that works? Over. So this. See the yeah. variables so always mess up my brain. Which is less than one. Which converges. Yeah. So I, mean, I did it for you, sorry. But uh, I understand your desire to want to do it twice, but I really so want you to understand the minute I've written this, I'm not looking at a series anymore. I'm looking at an nth term. So I can't apply a series test this because it's no longer a series, right? It's only a series because that's what makes it a series. And I don't have that anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. So for a problem like 25 on 1110, when you do derivatives of like trig functions, it's like hard to see any pattern. So oh shit, yeah. Do you have to um, start writing, like, 
So for scenario. those, you are going to want to input. You would hope the input is something like what they gave us, so yeah. that you, the pattern is really easy. So for those, you can't see the pattern from the derivatives because they just become other functions. Um, so you definitely want to plug the number in to see it. So, I mean, that's a really good example. Um, let's look at it. That was just the sine, right? Yeah, it was just sine x and then a equals time. Yeah, so once you start doing the derivatives, I can't, there's no pattern to it because it's just definitions, right? Yeah. Um, so this is an example of one where you have to plug the, the value in. And you're hoping the value they give you ends up with a clear pattern to it. Yeah. Right? And of course now you start getting negative some blah, blah, blah. So if you put the i in, you'll get zero, and then negative one. Negative one. Zero, one. Zero. Yeah. So this is n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So that in itself is an interesting problem. Yeah. Notice that the even terms aren't present. So then you can just focus on the odd terms, right? So yeah. you can kind of ignore these. And then you'll have odd things happening. And, and you already know what the series is. It's one of the ones we know, at least in the future. I don't know where this is. Um, yeah, that explains why it's got odd. Right. So for this one, you would have to actually like start writing out the form, the f of well, n form times x minus. Yeah. So this is the. So this. These are the f n at pi specifically. Yeah. So like you said, the derivative form themselves doesn't show me a pattern. In this case, I do have to plug the number in to see the pattern. And thankfully, yeah, if I gave you like pi over three or something. That are you going to have a question that's like, what are the first four uh, like numbers of this Taylor series or something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which in this case would just be f of. Well, if I said the first four terms, you'd have to go out for zero over n factorial. These are not really terms. Yeah. 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 So then it would be like negative one times x minus. Over n factorial, or like one. Yeah. That would be the term of the Taylor series. So, you know that this is true, and this is true. So, yeah, so now you want um, these don't matter. You only pick up the odd powers, the odd uh, n. Uh, so, it's just minus one to the n? Yeah. yeah. Well, at one, you want it to be negative. At three, you want it to be positive. Oh. Right? Hmm. 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 Shit. Most I'll let you think about it. But, and actually, I mean, you could just look at the freaking answer. <laughs> they give you the form right there. Um, so what you do is, this isn't really what n is going to be. So I'll, I'll kind of help you out a bit. So since these don't really show up. Oh, right, I remember. So that's actually n equal to zero. Zero. Yeah. So this is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is two. So it's minus one to the n. I really want you to get that. That's the flexibility we have yes. in the series. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I have every other term <laughs> would officially be zero, I can then just say this is the zero with term. This is the first term. This is the second term. Because that's what they will end up being, right? So just ignore the zero. Yeah, the zeros aren't going to contribute any any uh, elements, right? So now it's much easier. So if I start at zero, it's going to be negative one, two, then. Yeah. Well, if it's n, then that would be positive. Yeah, that's yeah. supposed to be negative, right? So anyway, does that help? And that's how they developed the sine x. Of course, they built it around zero. We're just going to have you know, x minus pi is a little roaming around. So the, I'm still a little bit confused. Um, is the Taylor series the numbers that you're getting when you plug in, like? No, no, okay, okay. No, right? The Taylor series is going to be built off of these. Okay. Right, over n factorial times x minus 
to take five. Okay. So the first four terms of this. So is this is a big part of it, but then this is pretty standard, and this is pretty standard. Okay. No, right. no, I just like right. So I mean, these, this does make up the bulk of what's different. Yeah. This basically identifies why the tail polynomials are different for each function, is because they're going to have different derivatives and different values, oh. right? But the core of it, this and this, are there. The weird thing is, we just did one where the impact all canceled because our derivative had an impact oral dependence, yeah. right? And that's kind of nifty. Yeah. Okay. Look, the look in your eyes, you're all like. Making sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, if it makes you feel any better, look at my other teachers like that too. Why well, did make him feel better? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, no clue what's going on at all times. And 1110? Yeah. <laughs> Prove that the series. It's actually oh. not true. I was just trying to make him feel better. We're uh, in exercise 18. <laughs> and you're a liar. Wow. Oh, so whatever. So you have to do 18. <laughs> and to do 18, you have to look up what the hyperbolic cosine is, and that's from section 311. Okay. And it's yeah. built off of e to the x and e to the negative x. It's beautiful. So it's like a problem inside a problem. Yes. Inside a problem. Inside a problem. Yes. Problem Problemception, yes. I'm a math teacher. I'm really good at those. <laughs> yes. You're done with the first part of 7. <laughs> is, does 10 expand on this at all, or is it something completely different? No, 10 is completely different. Okay. I, I, 10 can't possibly expand on It's before. Oh, because it's chapter one. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. It's weird that I, I like to do it at the end because it's a lot less intensive. Uh, I don't know. If, well, I'll tell you this. It's already basically time. I, I, I OK. I'm going to say it like this. Um, remember what's happening next week? No, I'm getting sick. Yeah, I feel it coming on. I'm going to be sick next week. Should um, we get ahead? Huh? Should we get ahead? So I'm going to make a requirement. When I come back, oh. <laughs> when we get back on, uh, so everybody with me, everybody got my email next week. I was going to give you a Wednesday off anyway, but now I need to leave town uh, earlier, so I'm going to give you Monday off also. Uh, and the compromise is you will look at 10-1 and 10 Three, not ten two. So ten one is parametric curves. Have you guys in in pre calc you should have done parametric. And parametric's kick ass. It's where you get the equations that govern spirograph kind of stuff. Oh, on my yeah. don't I have the do you still have the butterfly on the mm -hmm. on the canvas, right? So we're gonna actually see the butterfly equation. There is a butterfly equation. There's an equation that generates a butterfly. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you guys agree. You know, like, whatever. Yes? How far do we have to go into math to see, like, in-depth series again? Like, going in-depth into series? Not very far at all. Um, yeah, I can't remember if it really shows up in Calc 3 a lot, but definitely in, like, differential equations. Uh, linear, maybe, but Diffie Q for sure. Diffie Q in a big way. Because, uh, we all know this now. Aren't there some integrals whose only answer is a power series? Mm -hmm. right? Because e to the x squared is a good example of that. So differential equations is all about equations. Get this. Differential equations is all about equations with derivatives in them. Right? So like y double prime plus y prime minus 2 equals 0. That's a differential equation. right? And that's not simple. It doesn't have a second derivative and a first derivative and a constant all in it together. So I can't just integrate it directly and, and think it's going to do anything for me. I don't know if you guys get that. But anyway, some of those only have power series answers. And some of them are functions. If I can't get the answer, then certain things we have don't exist. Right? So, yep. So that's pretty soon if you keep going in math. If you don't, then you got to know if you're here. So it's all good. If you have a differential equation like that with a double derivative, why not just integrate twice and then it's a regular equation? Because if you integrate y prime twice, you go past y and you're trying to figure out what y is. y times yes. y prime double prime. So yeah. that's a little teaser. Yeah. If anybody's taking to the cube. I'm hoping I'm going to teach it. I haven't taught in a while. I'm going to teach it again. It's one of my favorite classes. One of them.
Anything else, guys? We're basically at the end here. Uh, no. Do you nine, remember what the rate is for this one? No. Yeah. Double checking. No class. The square root of one team familiar? No. Damn. So this Wednesday, of course, is the test. Uh, next Monday. I did. That's the ratio test. We don't have this class. Oh, okay. To be really careful, I had a student that didn't understand. I don't have control over your other classes. Your other classes could probably still be needing, correct? Um, I have control over my class, and I'm giving you my class off. Next Monday, next Wednesday. Okay. And look at 10-1 and 10-3. I'm going to assume you have done that when I see you on, the, on that Monday. Yeah, next week. Yeah, Yeah, you have three times three, two, three, three, two, 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 three